once will one? This must needs be sport alone, and those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Why should you think that I won't scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. <laughs> when I vow, I leap and vow so born, and then I do many all truth appears. How can these things in me seem to scorn you? Bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, O oh, devilish holy prey, these vows are Hermia's. Will you not give her o'er? Weigh oath with oath, and you will weigh nothing. Your vows to her and me put in two scales will even weigh and both as light as tails. I had no judgment, but to her I swore. And none in my mind. Now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, what is nymph, perfect, divine, to what, my love, shall I compare your eye? Oh, crystal is muddy, oh, how ripe and show your lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow, pure, congealed white, high tar as snow, fed with the eastern wind, turns to a crow, when you hold up your hand, oh, let me kiss, this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you're all set a bed against me for your merriment. If you were civil and in courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join the souls to mock me too, to vow and swear and super praise my parts. And I'm sure you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals in love, Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena? A triumph exploit, a manly enterprise, to conjure tears up in a poor maiden's eyes. Fear to rage you. I'll make you sport. <coughs> you are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know I know, and yours have held up to be bequeathed, and whom I do love, and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep your Hermia. I will none. Fair I loved her. All that love <coughs> is gone. My heart to her, but is guess what sojourned. And now to Helen. It is home returned. There are two men. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith you do not know, lest to your peril you do buy it here. Look where your love comes. Yonder is your dear. Dark night from the eyes of the face. The ear where quick of apprehension makes. You are not who my eye lies in found. My ear I thank you brought me to your sound. But why am kind of you leave me so? Why should he stay whom love is pressed to go? <laughs> what love can press lies in from his side? Lysander's love, that would not let him bide. But fair Helena, who more in gills the night, of all your fiery o's and eyes of light. You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious, Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired, have you with these contrived, to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared the sisters' vows, the hours that we've spent trying to make hasty foot of time for parting us. Oh, is all forgot? All school days, friendships, childhood innocence. We, Hermia, like two artistic gods, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, sides, voices, and minds been incorporated. So we grew together, like two double cherry seeming parted, but yet in union, in partition, two lovely berries molded on one stem, do but to one and crown it with one crest. Will you rend our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? <laughs> I'm amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And have you not set your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore does Lysander deny your love, and tender me, forsooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand how what you mean by this. I do. Persevere. Counterfeit sad looks. Make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Wink each at other. Hold the sweet jest up. This sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you are not making such an argument. But very well. It's partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remain. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet. Do not 
scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. You can compel no more than she can entreat. Your threats are no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love you. By my life I do. I swear that by what I will lose to prove him false that says I love you not. I say I love you more than he can do. If you say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where did you attend all this? Away, you foot licker! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he'll seem to break loose. Take on as you would follow, but yet come not. You are a tame man. Go. Hang off, you cat! You burr, vile thing, let loose, or I'll shake you from me like a serpent! Why do you grow so rude? What changes this, sweet love? Sweet love? Out, tawny totter, out! Out, rolled medicine, oh, hated potion heads! Do not suggest. Yes, Faith, and so do you! Demetrius, I'll keep my word with you. I would have had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond told you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, and since night you left me. Why you left me the gods have been earnest, shall I say? I by my life, and never to desire to see you more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, be sure nothing true, it is no jest, that you hate you and love Helena. Oh me. You juggler, you rotten blossomy thief of love, what have become my knight and stolen my love's heart from him? Fight in faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no such a bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Bye-bye, you counterfeit, you puppet, you! Puppet? Why so? Ay, uh, that way goes the game. I perceive she's made compare between her statures, and with her personage, her tall personage. With her height, she has to bear with him. Have you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, you painted maple? Speak. How low am I? I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in Jewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower? Hark again! Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels? Never wronged you? <laughs> Save that. In love unto Demetrius, I told him of yourself into this wood. He followed you. For love I followed him. But he has driven me hence, and threatened me, to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And so, well, let me quite go. To Athens will I bear my folly back, and follow you no further. Let me go. See how simple and how foolish I am. Why? Get you gone. Who is it who drews you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What? Lysander? Demetrius. Yes! <laughs> Be not afraid, Helena. She shall not harm you. No, sir, she shall not. Though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she's keen and free. She was a vixen when we went to school. And though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again. Nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to love me thus? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf! You minimus of hindering not grass made you be! You, you acorn! <laughs> you are too officious. On her behalf that scorns your services, let her alone. Take not her part. Be not this cruel terror to Helena, for if you do intend ever so little show of love to her, you shall pay for it. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if you dare, to try whose right of yours or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with you, cheek by jowl. You mistress, all this is because of you. <coughs> Nay, go not back. I no longer trust you. I will not stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for a prey. My legs are longer, though, to run away. <laughs> I am amazed. I'm not to say. I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 there lies your next 
intelligence. <laughs> Ever you mistake, else you commit these knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the feet uh, garments he had on? So far, blame was proved in my enterprise since I have anointed anything in his eyes. And so far, I am glad it did so sore to this their jangling I esteem a sport. You see these lovers seek a place to fight? Hide there, poor Robin, overcast the night. Let the starry sky cover you anon, with drooping fog as black as anchor on. And leave these testy rivals so astray, as one not come within another's way. And from each other's look you lead them thus, till o'er their brow doth counterfeiting sleep, blood and legs of batting wings as creep. Then? Crush the serpent to Lysander's eye, whose liquor has his virtuous property to remove thence all air with its might, and make his eyeballs roll with wanton sight. Then all of this derision shall seem a dream through this vision. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste. For a night swift dragon cuts the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger, at whose approach goes wandering here and there, true home to churchyards, damned spirits all. They willfully themselves exalt from might, and must fry and sore the crack round night. But we're spirits of another sort. I with the morning's love have oft made sport. Notwithstanding haste, make no delay. We may affect this business yet every day. Up and down. Up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared at field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where are you, proud Demetrius? Speak you now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where are you? I will be with you straight. Follow me then to plain or brow. Lysander, speak. You run away? You coward? Are you fled? Speak. In some bush? Where do you hide your head? Coward, are you bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that you look for wars? And come not, come you miscreant, come you child, I'll whip you with a rod he is defiled to draw a sword on you. Yeah, are you there? Follow my voice, we'll try no manhood here. He goes before me. Slatter healed and I. Just quite unfortunate because. Whew. Yes. But come, you gentle day, for I need find Demetrius and revenge of this spite. Oh, coward, why come you not? Find me if you dare, for well I know you run before me, shifting every place, and dare not stand nor look me in the face. Where are you now? Nay, then, you mock me. You shall buy this dear, if ever I your face by daylight see. Now, go your way. Faintness constrain now me. For this will be my tender bed. By daybreak, look to be visited. Jill, 
Not shall go ill. The man will have his mare again. And all shall be well.
Go, one of you. Find out the four, sir. And for now, observations for four. And since we are the vanguard of the day, my left should hit a musical man. I'll put them in the Western Valley. Let them go, I say. Dispatch. Find the forest, sir. We own my love. Up to the mountain salt. Marked through confusion of hounds that echo in conjunction. Never did I hear such gallant chiding. For besides the groves, the skies, the trees, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard such a discourse, such so sweet thunder. My hounds are bred the Spartan kind, so sandy. So told, as their heads are hung low with ears that swivel or the morning dew. Each under each, a crown of two of never halted, nor cheered with horns. A judgment here. Look, soft. What else are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep, and this, Lysander, this Demetrius is, and this Helena, old Nadar's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up to observe the red of May. And here in our tent, here, here, in grace and solemnity. But speak, Aegeus. Is this not the day that early should never answer? It does not work. Go, huntsman. Awake them with your horns. <laughs> comes the shape of conquering the world, where you all sleep by hate and fear no remedy. My lord, I shall apply basically half asleep, half waking, yet I do not know how I came here. But I do remember that I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone with, where we might without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord. You have enough. I beg the law, the law upon its head. They would have stolen away, they would. Demetrius, they arrived to have defeated you and me. You of your wife and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury never followed them, fair Helena, in fancy following me. But my lord, I know not by what power, but by some power it is, my love to Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idle toy that I did don't 